Hello and welcome to episode 36, 36, Matt, episode 36 of FPL Journey to 10K, the podcasting series in which we delve into the mind of one of the best players to ever play the game. I tell you it every week, I'm sure you know it, but I've got to tell you again, in his eight seasons of playing the game, he's finished in the top 10K six times. He was formerly ranked the world at number one and has never finished lower than outside the top 25K. Unbelievable stats. That is, of course, my co-host, Mr. Matt Corbidge. You'll be getting excited and ready for tomorrow, Matt. Wales are going to the Euros. We hope. We hope. We live in hope. Yeah, it should be a, it should be a good game. And thank you for being generous for your time. I know you were pushing for a Tuesday uh, pod, but <laughs> you might just squeeze me in on that. Uh, on, uh, on, uh, on do it to I thought I wouldn't. I couldn't live with myself if you if I if I didn't let you go and watch the, the watch you qualify. You know, uh, you are you are a generous man. But uh, I think we've uh, nailed the timers because I know you were pushing for one to do like that, a review of the miserable free hit last week. You wanted to do oh, something God. early. You wanted to do something on Friday. I was like, just wait. We'd have nothing to have spoken right. about on Friday, wouldn't we? So yeah, kind of hit the you jackpot did in, right. terms of, in terms of content. You know what? It makes me happy because when we get into the game week twenty nine review, we'll we'll just we'll just we'll do that in about two minutes. We'll move on. Nobody needs to remember what happened last game week. Long. We're all in the same boat. <laughs> we can all be miserable together. Nobody needs to remember it, right? Well, like you got a green arrow. Yeah. Oh, I think that was um, I had Gibbs White, Gibbs White than I. So I think that was like I think that was my one my one return. But um... well, let's load. Let's 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 load it up. Uh, did you ever think, genuine question, you could get 21 points and get a green arrow? Did you ever think that is was possible in this game? Uh, it's, it's shocking, isn't it? It's shocking. But, um, I mean, I think it's interesting there's, there's a bit of an, like, we all knew all the teams were quite bang average, but a lot of people were forced into into playing these teams because they had, like, three or four starters and whatnot. But um, and there's a bit of a narrative going around that, the people who did free hit 29 are winning because of what, how these doubles have landed. I disagree with that kind of like totally because like a lot of people that did free hit, they're like heavily vested in Luton, Bournemouth, maybe Liverpool, but maybe the wrong players from Liverpool really. So I think when it comes to attacking these doubles in 34 and, and 37, a lot of it depends on having the right players as well, right? So I'll talk about my team later, but you know, I've got Bradley, Kelleher, Kirkes. <laughs> it's like the the people that are doubling in, in 34, but maybe not the, the the kind of right players, the optimal players from those teams, right? So I think it's a pretty miserable result, right? Getting like 21, that 16, 21 points is like shocking all around, really, isn't it? Absolutely horrendous. When the, but then you, you said something last week about it, which was, like, don't overthink it. Everybody's going to have the same team. We're mm. either all going to have a lot of points or we're all going to have, a, a, like, no points. And the average was 12. So it, it just prove your point. Yeah, I mean, I think you want more than, like, a net. Well, you got net four points. That's a massive fail. Like, and I got a net nine points over the average. Like, that's a big fail for a free hit, for sure. Like, so, yeah. Um, I guess, yeah, that's just the way just the way it happens sometimes. So, <laughs> Yeah, gonna, gonna think... it anymore. Um, not really. Eight minutes in, we knew it was going downhill when Region decided to get himself sent off, and uh, only put him in on the Saturday morning instead of Roslev. Yeah. Uh, and then Alanga had one cleared off the line. Arigi had one cleared off the line, which Alanga would have got the assist for. Yeah. And it just went, it just went downhill. <laughs> so um, I don't really want to talk about it any more than we need to. Um, unfortunately, the next screen is talking points. But we'll get through this very quickly because we've kind of touched on it. The template was a disaster. We all know it. If you look at our teams, we both had the same team bar one player, Alanger and Gibbs White. Um, I know there was a little bit of talk about instead of Morris to get Moniz, but that was I was never going there. Morris is on pens. Jimenez was mm-hmm. back, so I was I was never really doing it if I'm honest. Uh, and I went Alanger over Gibbs White because he had better XG. Simple as that. All but all the popular captain picks failed as well. Tony one point, Sun two points, Morris two points, Watkins two points. I feel like Son owners could feel hard done by. Expected goal involvement of 0.8. Tony's yeah. expected goal involvement 0.63. Morris and Watkins 0.06. Horrendous game weeks for them. Just didn't didn't deliver at all. 
But yeah, it's, it's a bad cap to pick as all. The most, well, it's according to the stats, the top performers of the game week are now on your screen. Did you pick up? So you had Gibbs White. Did anybody else on that list, were they ever a, a realistic consideration? I reckon no. Mm-hmm. Maybe Muniz. Muniz second. No, it's big one. Maybe to me, Johnson's an interesting option, yeah. but not not over over and out anyone else so that was that was there. Yeah. So yeah, um, not over. And he only got one point anyway. You know. Anyway, mate. I think let's give let's give the call, let's give the Mitchell everyone once, and we want to talk about. Let's go. <laughs> let's go, let's move on. So well, let's go to fixture tickers. That's game week twenty nine. That pile of shits out the way. Let's move on to planning for the for the future. Uh, I'm assuming everybody that's listening would have listened to some form of pod last week, so they don't need their their misery compounded by us. Um, So, good news is, fixture tickers, because we did wait until today, have been updated. So, the double game week 34 data is there. Probably the reason why Liverpool, Bournemouth, Wolves, Everton and Sheffield United top the list. Um, So, where are you at? Where are you at, Matt? So, those fixtures, I've got a better graphic than this that shows you the doubles. Thanks to mm-hmm. Ben Crellin to show shortly. But where are, where's your head at? Are you looking at this and thinking, I need to target those top five? Or are you um, being conscious of singles? Well, a little bit of both. A little bit of both. Uh, I, I think the trick ticket is probably the best way of describing it at the moment, just because of the emphasis on, on doubles. So I think first thing I was looking at when the doubles were announced was just like, what's my, my wild card strategy? Really, and I think because there's literally no crossover between the two doubles, right? It's literally like a, a real, um, well, you got the what one, two, three, four, five, you got the five sets of fixtures in 34, and then there's completely different teams doubling in in kind of 37. And I'm quite well represented for teams that are, have got double fixtures in, in 34, so I've got triple Arsenal, I've got triple Liverpool. Not the best options, but we'll we'll kind of see. Like we'll, I'm happy to wait with Kelleher. I'm cap- happy to wait maybe with Bradley. I've got Kirkes from from Bournemouth, so let's see like what happens with him. So yeah, I've got like nine. I've got nine people that people that have got doubles in 34. So for me, yeah. and I've got no representation from Spurs and Chelsea. So which were the teams that will have two doubles in yeah, 37, then one of 35 and 36. It kind of made it really clear for me that 35 is like a, a really nice game week to target. So I was looking at that. So, yeah, like I'm looking, this is kind of a nice window for, for me. So, yeah, yeah, I'll be looking at the right Liverpool players for sure um, from a defence and an attacking point of view. Um, there's just people around the edges, really. I think, yeah, you know, Arsenal, Arsenal aren't on here because of the ticket, but Arsenal defence, Liverpool defence. Yeah, I think that's the, the, the kind of way forward, really, for someone like me who's doubling in in 35 i think if you probably got the attack as the next one in you as the next um correct game. there is the there's the attack so it shows you those arsenal fixtures yeah um so from yeah my point of view like it's a similar story and it's just going to be dominated by teams that are dug in right? so, yeah, when Ars- arsenal and bournemouth being like the really obvious um kind of candidates um yeah, so like when I'm looking at this, it's like Salah becomes kind of really um, kind of quite important for me. Like straight away, I don't have him at the moment, but I've got quite an interesting route to get to him. So yeah, I want him for Brighton at home. I want him for Sheffield United at home for sure. But all those fixtures are great from a Liverpool attacking point of view. I think my yeah. dilemma is just like, hey, I'd love to be doubled up. I'd love to have like Darwin Nunes potentially as well, but I've already got Bradley and Kelleher from... My antics and gave me twenty five, so I'm a little bit, bit snookered, but um, yeah, it's kind of like the obvious candidate for you when you look at this, right? It's it's Solanke, it's Salah, it's Nunes, it's Saka. I think um, Havertz is an intriguing o- option, actually, given like yeah. his his form, and I think yeah, he made the position that Force Nine is his position now, and then there's, there'll be some bar- bargain enablers as well, right? Wolves, obviously, their best two players are injured at the moment. In their own plan, but yeah, you know, they could come come good for, for game week thirty four. So Sarabia is is an interesting option if he's is he, if he's out. He's super cheap. 
I think people like Decore from Everton are super interesting as well for this period. And like you're looking at the teams that are doubling in 34. They have quite interesting pictures going up to that, right? You can do a bit of rotation as well. So I don't I don't think you can be you have to be too afraid uh, dropping some big name players from big teams. Yeah, oh. absolutely. But yeah, I think the story here is it's obviously dominated by the doubles and the in 34 yeah. and then the um the, the the teams that are doubling in 34 have, do have nice runs approaching that as well. So yeah, yeah. it's all good. Which works. Well there's a better it's probably a better graphic. So I should thank Ben Krellen for this. Not that Ben would be watching, but Ben Krellen, um this is on his Twitter, so it's open for anybody to look at. But this is the updated fixture planner. So yeah, as you say, anybody that you can see there in the yellow game week 34, that those doubles are set and confirmed. The purple in game week 37, they're yet to be announced, but they are very likely to be happening. And as you say, nobody that doubles in 34 is going to double in 37. Interestingly, Chelsea and Spurs look like, well, they have to double twice. We don't know when that other get, they're, they're going to double in 37 from the looks of it. We don't know when the other mm -hmm. one will be. Um, but is that why you may be thinking, well, if you wildcard in 35, it just allows you to get to three Chelsea, three Tottenham very easily. And then you get in those last four game weeks, they're going to play six times. Yeah, exactly that. Exactly that. I think is as easy as that. And and like if if they're because obviously these predictions are never hundred percent. And I think probably this year they've been quite good in terms of the the weeks where the doubles are going to um, land, but probably close to fifty fifty around exact fixtures. So they always take it with a bit of pinch of salt. If whatever for whatever reason Chelsea and Spurs get a double game week before 34 i think it's very very unlikely but if they do i think i'll just wild card into that i'd like take it yeah as is yeah. and just kind of like yeah triple up on both those teams but yeah for, for my structure at the moment even though i've got the non-ideal liverpool and bournemouth players i think yeah I'll, I'll kind of like make do with that and um and uh yeah wild card 35 i think is the obvious route for me um yeah yeah get that uh, just in case anybody hasn't seen this, so although Spurs and Chelsea both will double, uh, get two doubles, should I say, Spurs do blank in 34, so just mm -hmm. something to be aware of. They always, we always talk about teams that have nice single game weeks as well, right? So I did a little bit of a, of a look through these lists. And mm -hmm. teams that have a nice double game week in 34, but also a nice single in 37, which is something worth considering if, if somebody's got a bench boost in 37. Everton. So in the double game week, Forest and Liverpool home. Okay, Liverpool's not great, but it's a nice double with Forest at home. And then they have Sheffield United at home in 37. So it's probably not bad to, to keep hold of them. Wolves are another one. You've touched on them already. Arsenal and Bournemouth in the double. And then Palace at home in 37. That's really it. I mean, Bournemouth, Palace, Liverpool, okay. But, I mean, Liverpool's single in 37 is away at Villa. That's a tough place to go. But then I was looking at it the other way around. So somebody with a good double in 37 but a nice single in 34 and I can't see anybody maybe Man United who are at home to Sheffield tonight in 34 and then Arsenal and Newcastle that's horrible uh, home to Arsenal and Newcastle and a double's not ideal so, you, know what, you know what I'm getting at like the 34 yeah like the single teams that you're going to probably build up to in 34 have a, some of them have nice 37 game weeks as a single game week anyway so it's yeah. not oh, awesome. bad Obviously, the big thing here is like you've got a bench, you can bench three outfield players and, and a keeper, yeah. and you've got transfers in between as well, right? So, and you can take hits. Yeah. So, it doesn't need to have that perfect symmetry. But I, I know what you mean. If you're like planning for like the long term, if you don't have a wild card or if you're wild carding early, you want to look at these like nuances. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think I think you're right. Yeah, kind of, you can better cover 34 and then have a, a good single game week. Um, kind of like, yeah, um, well, but yeah, uh, I mean, this is definitely, yeah, for me, definitely kind of like, yeah, first reaction was like, yeah, 35 is where once I got over the the, the kind of scare and fright that I had, like looking at my team, which is pretty poor at the moment, I realized I could do like a hit and it looks it looks perfectly fine, it looks like pretty, pretty decent actually. I was like, yeah, 35 yeah. is definitely the thing that's been cemented. Um, in my mind for sure so yeah that's that's one we're going to do and then obviously bench boost in 37 um yeah i think um for me it was quite straightforward 
Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Well, we're gonna. I've, I've pulled it together a table now that those double game weeks are in place, which is, mm-hmm. in, in theory, the players to target. So these are over the next six game weeks the players that uh, Hub see as getting the most points. Salah is way out in front with a forty nine point four. Haaland's back on thirty eight, and then Saka thirty six. Then everybody seems to drop off from there. Mm-hmm. I do feel, and we spoke about this. I do feel Odegaard's probably overhyped. Mm-hmm. He's the meant to be fifth, and I do feel like uh, Darwin is under hyped on this thing because I'd, I'd expect Darwin Nunes to be up there if uh, Salah's that far in front. It must mean Liverpool have some nice fixtures, right? Um, but any uh, do, anybody jumping out here? Like I, I think Isaac's an interesting one. I don't think many people are talking about Newcastle. Um, I think rightly so. Like, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, Isaac. Obviously, Isaac's double is in 37 right and we don't want to like there's games around that so it's like you, there's a risk to put way too much emphasis on it but unfortunately he's like he becomes real he's a bit of a like you could have him as a third striker i suppose right and then if you if you want to be covering the kind of longer term view i think um for me obviously it depends on your chip strategy now so like for me this the the the, the view that i want to look now is game week 30 to 34 so 35 is almost redundant but obviously it's, it's yeah. team dependent but yeah, I think all the players here, the uh, you know the guy, the names you'd expect, Salah, Haaland, I think there there's a potential case, a risk, uh, kind of like a, a bold case of going without him. Um, yeah, at the moment, but um, yeah, you always expect him to be up there. Then it's the Arsenal attackers, Saka, Erdogan. I wouldn't put Martinelli up up with those guys. I'd put Havertz there, probably on equal power, if not a little bit better than. Erdegaard, I'd expect to have a second or third Liverpool attacker there. Yeah. I guess um yeah. yes, Nunes would be the one that, that stands out. It's a bit of a toss up whether yeah. like you know Diaz would be, be be someone that you that you consider. Um yeah, like kind of what Watkins I think is going to be an interesting option because like he is see the top scorer in the game still at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, think so. um, just be, just because he's got single game weeks and isn't on pens and has mixed fixtures. You can see game week 31 and game week 33 are, are tough ones for him. I think he's going to be yeah, yeah. Um, a player that quite a lot of people drop, like in favour of yeah. Solanke, a Haaland, a Darwin, and Isaac maybe as well. So, yeah, yeah. Um, there'll be some kind of movements there. But, um, see, I can't, yeah. yeah, I mean, uh... a, a player I'm looking to get rid of is is actually Foden. So, like, I can see him, he, he's kind of looking pretty pretty solid in the next couple of game weeks but I think I've got I need to get rid of him, him as a like sacrifice to, get, to enable Salah I think so I'm yeah. cool with that he's just he's the move yeah Watkins mm. is an interesting one isn't he because as you say best performer in the game point wise he's got a derby yeah. next it is an over to Wolves so you'd probably still expect him to do all right but then he's away at City he's also got away he's away at Arsenal in 33 he hasn't got a double in 34 so yeah, or thirty-seven for that matter. So I do, I, I agree. I think yeah, he's, he's quite quite expensive as well, right? So if you go from Watkins to Isaac or Watkins, everyone's got Solanke, you'd assume. But if you don't, Watkins to Solanke or Watkins to Mateta exactly. for Grant for Palace, like it. I mean, that, that frees up a lot of lot of cash where you can do upgrades, right? So um, yeah, yeah, I think he's, he's, he's a expensive player who's done well, but I think um, yeah, can, you can afford to lose him now given the run. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. I'll be I'll delighted if Kelleher is, 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 is. I see Kelleher lurking on on that, that top list of predicted yeah, yeah. points in the fix, like at the bottom. I'd be delighted if he, yeah, yeah, Allison doesn't come back. I, I think I think that there's yeah. been no news of like he's got a, like a like a unspecified return date, and I think Kelleher is like perfectly good, very good keeper, right? So I'd be I'd be delighted if I had that little bit of little bit of luck. That run. Yeah. As a Liverpool fan, I disagree. I want to see Alisson back as soon as possible. Um, Keller's not a bad number two. But uh, what, get ready for the comments after this. Get no, ready for the comments. Alisson's the best keeper in the world. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. Right, of course. Cool. Well, like, yeah, I mean, Keller's perfectly fine. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. No, we'll, don't rush him bad. back. Don't he's rush him not back. Bad. Um, those those Salah num- numbers are insane, though, aren't they? Look. Yeah. Wow. 
That's no, it. I mean, other than I think we mentioned this last week because we're ahead of the curve, Matt. Uh, other than game week thirty-three, he is predicted to get more points than Haaland in every single game week. Yeah, those are huge, huge, huge numbers. Um, yeah, I think probably looking on very good trip, very nice triple cap. That's your option in game week thirty-four for those that that, that still have it. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's a uh, hopefully he, he comes flying. Uh, Talking about captain options and triple captain. It's like you knew the screen was coming next. Uh, <laughs> these are the predicted points for this game week as a standalone. Salah's top. He's at home to Brighton. Brighton's poor defensive record has mm-hmm. been... We've spoken about that a few times. Although they have they have made it a little bit more assured in recent weeks. Uh, but is it your pick? If you, if you, if you, I appreciate you don't actually have Salah in your team. So, he, so I'm assuming not. Um, some second, I think you mentioned there you don't have any Tottenham players either. So is, is Palmer your pick this week? Well, I don't have Palmer either, but um, I will have I will have Salah and Palmer in my team. Those are going to be my moves. Okay, so, yeah, good, good to see <laughs> good to see our validate and seeing them as the two of the top um, three captaincy options. And like, normally, I'd be um, like I wouldn't want to do. I wouldn't be a fan of doing a hit when I've got a fit team where I've got. I'd be benching a good option if I bring in a player and all that kind of good stuff. But like, I don't have a prime captaincy option at the moment. Like, I've got Watkins yeah. and or Haaland as my prime captaincy options, and like, I agree. Looking at this table, they're like, yeah, there's a gap of almost two points predicted points to Salah there. So I kind of like agree with that that sentiment there. So I think, um, yeah, I want Salah in my team ASAP, and so I'm, I'm yeah. quite happy to to do a hit to Especially fix throw that. The captaincy. So, um, yeah, I, I I I view him as the is the best best option then? I think yeah. I'd, I'd say Palmer and Son thereafter. I probably put Palmer above Son if I'm being honest. Just um, yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, he's just more involved, right? Better under line stats and, and kind of more 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 involved. So yeah, I think um, I kind of agree what with the story this is this is um, telling. On this table, yeah. Right? yeah. Well, I'm not going to bring it up now. But just prepare yourself because I will be bringing it up before this ends. Mm-hmm. Son is second. Richarlison's an eighth. I want to discuss that because there's a th- over three million pound price difference. Okay, mm-hmm. I'll come back to that. Bearing in mind, he's coming. I'm going to ask I mean, you some, some serious questions. I mean, with, with that one, like obviously, you know, we we're just taking these from fix and t- treating them as truth, right? So, like, you got to apply your own nuances. Yeah. I think. What Son got has got going for him are two big things. Penalties is one, and then also ninety minutes a game is a is a big thing as well. So um, of course, yeah, I, I haven't had him since I think game week twenty seven. A lot of people brought him in when Richardson got injured, and people brought in brought in Son when when he was back from um, the Asian Cup. Um, yeah, all of his points have pretty much come after like eighty five minutes. It's been like really annoying yeah. to look as a. Not only, especially because there's not been a much like he's just been super clinical as well, which is what he does. But that kind of like does paint the value of having a 90 minute player. What I'd say on the flip side yeah. is obviously we know that Son has performed better this year when he's been the centre forward than he was playing centre forward yeah. for that, that streaky couple of weeks from game week 27 to game week 30, well, game week 27, 28, 29, where he was getting some really nice big returns. He was playing as the centre forward, and that was sort of Richardson was injured. Richardson's back now, and like he's too good a player not to start for Spurs, right? Yeah. He's better than their alternatives for sure. He's better than Werner. He's better than um, Johnson. So like yeah. you'd think he'd start a centre forward, really, and then that pushes Son a bit wider. So a bit of a question of whether you can live with that. So there's pros and cons around like comparing them. Well, I'm going to bring it up. We might as well talk about it now as we're talking about them. So, 3 million, what is it? 3.2, 3.2 million mm-hmm. difference mm-hmm. if you have a Charles over Son. Appreciate some people will have value in one or the other. And dead so, but it's roughly, call it 3 million, right? Mm-hmm. I know you're a big fan of expected goal involvements per 90 minutes. Yeah. Well, except for Son, because they don't matter. Because <laughs> well, he's always overperforms. Um, <laughs> well, Son's is 0.6. Yeah, yeah. That's Richarlison's good. isn't it is, but Richarlison's is 0.67. So is his is his higher. Expected goals 
per 90. Son, 0.34. Richarlison, 0.59. It's not far off double. Yeah. Yeah, he's £3 million cheaper. Hmm. That not just screams here. What a what a what a pick that could be. Save yourself three million. That's what you could go for. spend it elsewhere. Yeah, exactly. You you could get I don't know. You get Sterling instead of Palmer. <laughs> well, you could also like so. Don't, uh, you, you'll see why I'm discussing this in a bit. But it could mean the difference between Branthwaite and Virgil Van Dijk. Hmm. I think Brian Freight would do well. <laughs> Actually, I think. Yeah, which I'm not. Yeah, that's just yeah. an example, right? Yeah. It could be, it could be, it could be any, but that's that's the sort of yeah, thing yeah. that you could do with three million. I'll show you. Yeah. I'll show you in a bit. I'll show you what I'm looking at. But it's just, it's just like for three million. That, that considering that, again, it's underlying stats and underlying stats only. And you're right, Richarlison mm-hmm. will probably get subbed off after 70, 80 minutes. But the fact that he's three million cheaper and his expected underlying data points this season's higher in both expected goal involvements and more importantly, it's nearly double the expected goal data. That just that just screams Richarlison's the pick to me. But yeah, you're I mean, former world number one, which is why I'm asking you. Yeah, we, well, it just has to be a really compelling option for the alternative you know, what you're spending extra the extra three million on. That's just gonna be really yeah. compelling. Uh, and you must be really sold on that because the numbers you're quoting, I don't know this for a fact, but I bet me that they're just like quoted by per ninety. It is per uh, ninety. That's yeah, per ninety. Exactly. And, and of course, like they're pretty close at per ninety, but then obviously if you divide Richardson's by like twenty five percent to yeah, you know, cover that he's gonna get subbed at sixty or seventy minutes most games, yeah. Return to in- yeah. injury and everything, then like Son is 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 a bit 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 far out in front. Yeah, because he's uh, got the extra twenty minutes to 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 for for that data. It is it is per ninety. Yeah. Um, interestingly, it's like I'll show you. I'll show you. In, so I'm, I'm, I won't spoil it, but I'm going to show you a team in a bit, and we'll see what you think of it. Yeah. Um, Richardson and Son conversation will no doubt come back up. <laughs> so on to. Matt versus Dave. I think we don't have to Not talk about last week because you absolutely dominated it. Nice. You absolutely dominated it. Uh, we yeah. all picked players, obviously, in the in the out of the eight teams. Muniz with us thirteen points. He was only four percent owned. Got you a solid. You were 13. big on Muniz as well, weren't you? You were big on him going into. I was a fan. Yeah. I bought him up. He was never in my team. In all fairness, he was never yeah, ever in my starting lineup. Um. But he just for me, if I if if I had four striker spots, he'd have been in. He'd yeah. have been my fourth striker. But obviously, you can only have three in that game. But he'd have definitely been my fourth. If if we'd have heard Watkins is injured, definitely not going to play. He'd have been the replacement, no question about it. But I was, uh, I can't be annoyed because he was never that close to being in my at like my actual pick. Uh, you know, I was unlucky as well. Johnson, I think on your expected points, sir. Uh... Tracker was like expected points of nine. He hit the bar, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you, you got unlucky with him with with his one point. <laughs> but then Kudus and Barkley for me did absolutely nothing. One point and two points each, three points total. You got 40, which brings it to 11 11, uh, right. which is interesting. I get to go first this week. And I'm going to double check. I, I, looked, at, I looked at my picks. Over the weekend, and at the time they were less than five percent owned. I best double check that they're still less than five percent owned. Otherwise, you'll be telling me off, and rightly so. Well, I hope so. If you're going for the th- the option that I'm probably looking at now as the number one pick. Okay, so the person I'm looking at is four percent owned presently. He's just back from injury and he's playing at home against Luton. And I've just spoke about him for about 15 minutes on how much better than Sonny is. Okay. I am picking... He's not on my team, so I can pick him. But I'm picking Richard Allison. Well, I'm surprised his, his ownership is so low. 4% owned. That's crazy. So he's oh, my no. number one. And I've got a second that I hope you're not going to pick. 
Well, I was going for Isaac, but he's like 12, he's 12% owned some, somehow. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. That is really crazy. It's big, big, big picks. I think a lot of maybe a lot of uh, people jumping from Wilson to, to Isaac when Wilson got injured, maybe. Yeah, what are the fixtures anyway? So there's, there's, some, there's some absolute standouts. The only other no, Tottenham no. player you can take is in reality is Kulosevsky, and it's whether now that no, I'm not, I'm not Charleston's going there. back. I'm not going there. Does he play? No. You do right. You do right not to. That's I think he will cool, play. Probably, it'd probably be better so not low, benched. Own ownership. It's mental enough. Four percent. When we both know how much better than Sonny is. That's what I'm gonna that's, that's what I'm gonna title this 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 episode. Son is Son isn't as good as Rich Allison. That's what it's that's what I'm gonna <laughs> That's what I'm going to call it. No, I'm going to have a look at the games. The Chelsea, drop. Chelsea is, a, is a great fixture. Newcastle is a good one from an attacking point of view. Spurs is. Your, your, your hero, Moniz, is playing Sheffield United. Yeah, true. I could go him again, actually, to keep up his streak. Let me go Moniz, yeah. I'll go him again. Whilst I'd buy some time. That, you... I don't... I don't... So he's only 4.7% owned. So he's still under he's still under that that, that threshold. So my knees for you versus Sheffield Ooh, United. I've got a spicy one actually that I'll go as <laughs> I hope you don't beat this guy. Well I'm I'm targeting Chelsea. Oh fuck. I'm pretty <laughs> you've got sure. him. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Nkunku is still injured. So as a result, I'm going oh. for uh, I'm going for Jackson. Yeah, I was going. Four point six percent owned. Yeah, that's who I was eyeing up. I like that as a pick. <laughs> ah. This this feels better than you know Kudu Sparkly, Manise Johnson, right? Manise, don't get me wrong. Manise and and Johnson are and is isn't bad, but. Richarlison, Jackson, Moniz, like proper stri- we're, we're picking strikers yeah, again, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is good. Right, I might go. Ooh. Right, so the players I'm thinking are Bailey, Eze, mm-hmm. and Decore. They're all under, are they? They're all under the five percent threshold. <laughs> like so. I'll double check. Name them again. Decore. Decore should be right. Uh, Surely Decore is. I'm, I'm going go Eze. I'm going to go Eze. That just screams out as a mid fixture, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like Palace against um, Forest. Yeah. That, yeah. Eze. That screams out. He, he'll get like a double digit haul by. He'll do like. He'll have an assist and a great goal. Yeah, I'll go Eze. And is he on pens as well? He'll be on pen at least, won't he? He should be. Yeah, uh, I think um, Elise is still out. I think he is on pens anyway, so yeah, I'll go. I'll go Eze. But yeah, not, you got nice picks there. Jackson, I was like, yeah. I kicked myself that I didn't, <laughs> didn't, didn't clock on. He was my second pick. My third pick was Maniz. So it would, they were both coming out at some point. But yeah, so G- Richarlison and Jackson versus Moniz and Eze. I feel like we could, I'm going to jinx it, but I feel like we could both get double digits from that. Yeah, I think so. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, moving on, so we are into flying through this one, but we'll get ready for this conversation in a second because I've got my team there. Um, so this is looking at my thoughts ahead of game week 30. One free transfer, it's an easy one. If, if, I, if I just do the transfer, but I just play, you know, don't take any hits, Juan go to Palmer. Simple as that. I'll play Palmer, gross, I get a pot on the bench. What I don't like about that is I'm playing five players in Arsenal versus Man City which doesn't feel good to me at all. And the only bench options I'll have is Gross away at Liverpool, doesn't feel great. And Charlie Taylor away at Chelsea also doesn't feel great. So I'm not overly happy with the team. Other thoughts? You knew it was coming. Is the wild card an option, Matt? Is the wild card an option? Um, and I'm just going to show you something that I've put together. So this is a potential wild card draft that I've been working on. I've yet to hit the button, but I feel it's coming. So just to run through the team for anybody that's listening, I'm, I'm, I'm swapping keepers. I've got Raya and Petrovic. I'm the hope that Petrovic keeps the number one jersey at Chelsea. 
That means I can target the double game week in 34 with my Arsenal keeper. And then following that, I've got a Chelsea keeper that's going to be doubling twice. So it, it, mm-hmm. it sorts that headache up for me. Across the defence, I'm keeping Gabriel. So I've still got a double Arsenal defence with, with Raya in there as well. And then I've got Gusto, Nori for Wolves, Branthwaite, who we mentioned before, could do well. Um, and then I've got Lachelle's 3.9 million. Botman's out until pretty much the end of the, the calendar yeah, yeah. year. So I'm assuming Lachelle's is going to be going to be starting and he's 3.9 million. Across the midfield, the big the big four, Son, Salah, Palmer, Saka. Uh, Salah and Saka both double in 34. And then Son and Palmer come in with two doubles going into 35 onwards. And then my bench, you mentioned Sar- Sarabia before. He's my bench option. And then up front, target the doubles. Darwin, Salenke, and they are then backed up by Halland. My pros, just to run through my thought, I can see that I can see that why you're looking at it, right? My, my pro points. I think that team, if I wildcard in 34, that's going to be the team I build, or something very similar to that. Mm-hmm. So I don't see the point in holding on to it for the sake of it. It keeps the double arsenal defence. That gives me nine players that double in game week 34 and my other two players that I'll play will be Haaland and Palmer, who I will play in any given game week regardless because of their pedigree. Mm -hmm. I'll then have four transfers between 35 and 37, uh, 34 and 37, sorry, to get myself to 10 double game week players. And I'll have Salah Saka, Gabriel Rea and another. So that screams bench boost in 37 and I'm covering a lot of the big hitters. The things I don't like about it is that team I've got there is bang on budget. So mm-hmm. it, it doesn't leave me very flexible in terms of my transfers, unless I'm downgrading a son to a Rich Arlison, as an example, and I might yeah. talk about. I also lose Watkins ahead of the game against Wolves, which doesn't make me feel great, but I do think Darwin and Solanke are better long-term options. Um, and my defensive price points are non-existent. So Gabriel's 5.3 million, great. Everybody else is 4.5 million or less. So it's very difficult to upgrade my defence if I want to. On the face of it, Matt, you've been studying it whilst I've been chatting. On the face of it, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I like it. I like it. Um, I think like you're saying the defence is a bit of an issue, but defence hasn't been scoring big for an eight, no. for ages, right? And then you've got you've got the you. You got Gabriel, you got Reyes, you got the double Arsenal defense covered, which is the only decent defense out there in terms of like players that are nailed. I reckon the Everton defense is going to get. There's a few clean sheets there. I reckon they've been yeah. they've 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 been they've been de- decent. And then Chelsea, yeah, they've got that run of like two doubles, so you cover there pretty nicely as well. And the players are complementing each other, so it's pretty nice. And then hey, if you really need someone, I don't know. I don't think some of these other kind of defenders are kind of worth it, to be honest. But if you really wanted Van Dyke or Trent, you could always yeah. down. You've got some big, you've got money, like really um, focused on three players, right? Haaland, Son and Saka, right? So you can get rid of Haaland if you want for a week or two. Do you reckon? I was going to say Son. You get rid of Son, like keep Son for the really easy fixtures now and then. Um, swap him out, but you'd be if you bring in like a, if you like playing that like um rotation with um game week 34 in mind, you might you probably want Van Dyke or Trent, right? And then you'd want Son back yeah. in and game week 35 potentially. So you know, you could just bin Haaland like instead, right? Downgrade him to well, you could bring in Mateta, like if you want, like for another double, and then just bring in Van Dyke and just reverse that decision in following weeks. So yeah, I think it's cool. I think it's a, I think it's a good solid team, really. I think um, I did play with, play around with wild card drafts, but I think I was almost like a million pound off like a team like this. So mine was really yeah. poor. Like so, where you had a a Ray, I'd have to have a three point. I'd have to have a Kelleher, which is obviously a risky game around whether he's um, fit or whatnot. And I think I don't. Think I was able to have Son as well. I'd have to have Richarlison. So yeah, I think I think this team looks good. I'd, I'd go for this over like a Richardson draft. So you prefer that? So Son and the defense have got rather than a Richardson with a, a Van Dyke no, exactly. instead of a Lachelle's. Exactly. What I like as well is there's really obvious, the non double game, which has really obvious bench options, which like some people like having 15 options every week. I think if you own sanity, it just helps. Like 
Sarah Beer is going to be the bench option outside of that double for the, for the attackers, which is, which is fine. Yeah, Darwin, but Darwin's like a rotation option. Then, Hey, like then you might consider him, but he's, he's the bench. Petrovic Vich outside of double will be bench for Ray all the time, which is easy under the fence. Like you got Gabriel there all the time. Then you're just rotating based on fixtures. Oh yeah. I like, I like this team. I think obviously you've got yourself into a difficult position where, you don't really, if you don't wildcard, you don't have an easy option to Salah because your money. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Your money is in Son, who you want to, he has a nice run up until 34, really. So you won't want to downgrade Son. The same for Saka as well. So you don't have a placeholder for Salah. Easy so he's going to be difficult to get to, which then obviously we saw him at, we're both viewing him as a necessity. So um, yeah, I like it. I like it. Um, I think. Yeah, and you're right. I think what it does that, that's my that's my oh yeah, go on, sorry. You can say what what your team does show is that and the risk of it is because you're wildcarding now, you want Son, Salah and um and Harlan in your team. Like it does really stretch it, then the 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 money and makes it kind of like the defense does does look pretty poor, but I think you can get away with it. But like the benefit the people who wildcard in thirty five or thirty six will have is that they could feasibly just drop Salah. Um, yeah, but it could it could work in your favour because, like you said, the like you said if you're bench boosting in 37 here, you're not going to have a physical squad of 15 double game week players. However, the ones that aren't doubling are the premium options who are always going to play for like the best teams. So you got Salah, Saka, yeah. Gabriel, and Raya. So you might come up trumps if some some people be messing around with their bench boost options being like, I don't know, uh, what's his name, the, the, the yeah, kind of United. Winger, for example, like Garnacho. Uh, Garnacho. They'll be putting all their money on on him, whereas you've got Saka on you. Saka would be your bench boost option, right? I know who's like, when you think about it like that, you know who's like kind of better. So I've bench boosted with like single game week, great single game week players. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. I think, I think you could be quite happy. And then it could come up trumps in and around it because I think uh, Arsenal, Liverpool, you think they've, they could have a lot to kind of play for going into 38 as well. So yeah, I like it. I mean, I mean, I'd be hitting that wild card now. To be honest, I think it's solid. Oh, right. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh... yeah. But like going back Dude, to your old team, your old team is is yeah. quite broken. Yeah. I mean, it is. It... Like you would have to like downgrade Watkins to someone pretty poor, and then up and I change Foden or Gross. You have to be Foden probably to to Salah to fit him in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Absolutely, it's it, it's it doesn't feel great this team at all. Uh, no. my, only, my only real, as I say, selling Watkins ahead of that game at home to Wolves doesn't feel great. That's my only consideration. Is no, Modia? No. I suppose. I mean, it's about it's who we replaced them with, right? And it'd be it'd be Darwin Nunes, who is at home to Brighton. Yeah. Again, could easily could easily outscore Watkins, right? Yeah, Nunes could easily be benched as well this this game week. But given, I'm presuming he's playing. He's with Uruguay, is he? At the moment. Yeah, he'd be away. I'd assume. Yeah. So. Yeah. But Liverpool play on the Sunday, so I'm hoping I'm hoping Klopp sees the extra day rest because they haven't got an early kickoff after a, after an international break for the first time this season. So uh, I think yeah. Darwin's got to get the extra day. I guess the same goes goes to Diaz as well, really. Like, it, like um, whether one of them will probably get rested. I don't know if it'll be both then, but um, yeah, I think I think yeah. Next couple of game weeks, I'd rather um, Nunes over Watkins. But yeah, I think I think it's yeah. just tough to fix, uh, fit it, make those moves really, kind of with your current team. Um, yeah, I'm glad I mean, I don't know about it. But... One point seven. Yeah, I don't even think it. Like, you'd have to downgrade Watkins to bench fodder. You won't be able to even get like a Mateta or a Munez. Yeah. I think you'd have to like get into a non-starting forward to fit in a, a salary. Up, yeah, I could... salary upgrade, right? So, um, yeah, I think uh, I think probably for your team it is the best best approach. It's the wild card. Um, What? I'm glad you're so positive about it, Matt. I thought mm. I was going to show you this, and you were like, 
What's that shit? <laughs> you played your wild card, you idiot. So it's um got to hear you being so being so positive about it. Uh and obviously from the sounds of it, don't go with Son over Richarlison is what you're advising. We can always reverse it, right? That, like you got the luxury here that you don't like I don't know there's a desperate need for you to have Van Dyke. Van Dyke seems to be the person you're targeting, right? Like Yeah. There's not a desperate need to have Van Dyke against Brighton, like Sheffield United, whatever. Like, yeah, cool. Um, Manchester United. There's not a desperate need to have him versus the options no, that, true. You, that you've that you've got, and like you get to see Son and Richarlison together. Like, what's their minutes and what's the dynamics? Like, if it feels right. like, oh my god, like yeah, Son isn't doing anything. You can just downgrade him to in in thirty so forty. This, this... You can downgrade him and then upgrade a defender. Like you get Decore, you? You, you could just go hard on double. Yeah. Like you could get Decore and then get Trent if you wanted, if he was back, like for like yeah. the shells or something. So, like, I think it just gives you nice flex where you've got this money sent in a few players. Um, yeah, I'm a fan. Good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad I'd said, uh, fully expect that to be my team when we chat next mm. week. Um, but on to yours. I'd appreciate you. you. You've got one free transfer, but you mentioned you kind of hinted that you might be doing a doing yourself um, a a hint a hit even. Yeah. So, so my team at the moment, read out is is Kelleher, Bradley, Zambani, Gabriel, and then you know, benched. I've got Saliba and Kirkes to complete my defence. Midfield, I've got Richardson, Gordon, Saka, Foden, and De Bruyne benched. Um, up front, I've got Solanke, Harland, who's my captain at the moment, and Watkins. And then, yeah, I've got Ario as a benched keeper. So it's not looking great, but you can probably see at the logic when I was saying I want to target 35 as a wild card rather than sooner. That's kind of dictated by my budget. I have quite a low budget because I've like had a few players that have hemorrhaged value throughout the year. Um, you know, right from the beginning of the year, it's been like loads of players I've lost like a lot of lot of value on. Um, so I can't get a team as good as yours out there. Um, so I guess my saving grace there is when I do wild card it, it would be like it would be for two premiums rather than three it'd be like you won't have harland and salah it have harland or salah but i can spread those kind of funds then to kind of get a more balanced team um, i'm obviously viewing salah as a must have now and still i think man city have some good fixtures so you want harland now for this little run as well so the wild card becomes not that appealing and then yeah i am quite heavily vested in in invested in players that have got a, a game week 34 double anyway Obviously, it's not the ideal players, but I'm kind of happy to run with it. Like Kelleher, yeah, could depend on the severity of. I know it's like a month away, but depend on the severity of um, Allison's injury, he could still be there. Bradley again, you know, he could he you know, he could he could be the starting right back. Who knows? Right, let's see, let's see uh, if Trent is eased back in. Let's see if he plays in midfield. Um, uh, obviously, I'm very happy with my Man City triple up like Gabriel Saka Saliba. If I was Wild carding or free hitting to like uh, the best Arsenal trio, it'd probably still be them. Actually, it'd probably be still be them if I was free hitting for one week only, it'd be habits, but like not long term just because yeah. of like the uncertainty around minutes, right? But yeah, if it was like one week only, I would I would be having um habits over Saliba for sure. And like, probably if I was going to uh, defenders, I'd go white over Saliba as well. So, yeah. um, but I'm happy with that, that that trio is a, is a nice one. My form of players, everyone's going to have Solanke. He's a bit of a non-negotiable. Zabrani, yeah, he's kind of cool. Um, Kirk is like, what a mistake. Um, and he's yeah, gone. like just just hopeful that he he comes back into the back into the squad. Like, but not 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 feeling that good. But yeah, I've got nine players who are doubling, and then some solid players like in and around it. Don't have massive injury issues at the moment as well. So yeah, yeah the team is looking good. I've got one free transfer. Um, and yeah, as I was saying, um issue here is that's not an amazing captaincy option. I've got Watkins and Harland really looking at looking as the options there. Richardson is a bit of a you know, a bit of a punch, man, but I'm not happy with any of them. So yeah, I, I think Salah's by far the best captain and then fight by far the best option in the following game week so i need to get him in and lucky i've got a cash cow in de bruyne right. who's been like a, 
an absolute shit option for me since game week 25. Probably one of the mistakes of the season for me. Um, so yeah, like I need to so to move the Bruyne to Salah, I need like um I need to move, yeah, I need to save money elsewhere and quite a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was looking at my team, who can I get rid of? Foden seems to be the vi- most viable option for me to downgrade. Because, yeah, yeah if I downgrade Foden, I've got 5.8 or 5.9 to spend on a midfielder. And then you've got Palmer at 5.7, right? So I think yeah. he's a far better option than any of the others. So I could I, I could downgrade Watkins, for example, but I think there's a biggest a drop-off. I think Palmer is an upgrade on Foden, certainly this week, but like in yeah. subsequent weeks, I think he's an upgrade as well. And I know Chelsea don't double in 34. So I could... I could Target a Decore or a Sarabia, but like um, I think the single game weeks between now and then, like Palmer's going to still outscore them even with the double game week. So yeah, yeah. like yeah, but have a bit, a bit of a focus on the here and now. Palmer's got an awesome game against Burnley. He's got a few other nice fixtures, and like it's just a bit of a must-have. And I think I should just probably run my team quickly to see if I can still afford that. Because <laughs> if I've just like slept on price changes, then yeah, it becomes a bit more of a Don't discussion. Think much has moved. Luckily, um, yeah, but I'm assuming if, if they, yeah, I don't think it's moved. Luckily, uh, so I think you should be able to. But it, I'm, if, I'm assuming if they're the transfers you do, you've then got Palmer and Salah. I'm assuming then is, is your bench option then then Gordon, or because you're gonna have then eight yeah, attackers, it's, 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 all of which you'll good, be happy with. It's a good point. Just on that move, I got point one fresh out to like one in the bank. That, so. I'll probably do it. I'll probably do it tonight just out, just um, to be safe. I know, I think the reason I was sitting on it was like there was rumors Harlan was out, but yeah, yeah it feels like a bit he's of an not. international. No, he's, it feels... he's definitely not out. He's, he's gone. He's gone for the second friendly. He's there. Oh, he's, with the, he's, with, he's, yeah. he's even come out and said um, that the English oh, rumors are nonsense. Yeah. So, he's, so he's, he's all right. You can see how much attention I play to, play to football. <laughs> Yeah, was not on. I only read that today. I only read that today. To be fair, that's 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 fairly new news. No, I, I think I might make that move now, just because otherwise it's so much better than any other move I can I can make really because I'm upgrading both players. But yeah, if I was to um make that move, I yeah, there's a bit of a toss up between two or three players. So Gordon is an option to bench. Um, West Ham are a terrible defense, and Newcastle are a good attack, and they're at home. And Gordon just seems to be on this streak at home. Saka is an option. Saka away to City is a is an option to to kind of bench Solanke maybe. Yeah, it's going to be a, a be a. I'm not. I won't be happy with any of them, but I can be. I've made this mistake in the season before, right? Where I've got rid of perfectly good players, but on this one, I'm not just bringing in what the player that I'm benching. So I'm like bringing in like the best captaincy option, and then also the second best captaincy option. So. I'm sure that yeah, I'm kind of I feel I feel like happy with it. Um yeah, I'm probably gonna set my myself up for some um bench points pain, but like yeah, I'll live with it. So yeah, I think uh, I think maybe Saka, maybe Saka even is is is, is the option. Um and then yeah, like obviously See. I'm playing Gabriel over Saliba purely because of goal threat, really, and then yeah, I think all the rest of the team kind of picks itself. So, yeah, minus four hit, which don't really like doing, but I think um, yeah, should should pay off just with the captaincy kind of angle as well. Yeah, um, if, yeah, the, that's a, the, the 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 ones that you're bringing in, you expect to make four plus points to who you're selling. So yeah, yeah, well, but it's, it's kind of like yeah, it's kind of whoever I bench because like De Bruyne, I'd actually honestly bench even if he was fit, yeah. I'd probably bench him over Gordon. Saka and Solanke, that, that's kind of like what the hell am I doing in my team? But like, yeah, I'd, if he, if he was even if he was fit, I'd be be benching him. So it's like, um, yeah, the 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 Palmer and Salah captain outscore Foden plus I don't know, let's say Gordon for argument's sake plus a Harlan captain. I, I'd say that yeah, yeah, yeah. by four, but whatever, like yeah. it kind of like sets me up good for the medium term anyway. So I'm kind of like happy yeah. with that. And then like plan forward then would be sitting a little bit and just seeing how things develop in the other double teams. So like, let's see what happens with Kirkes. Let's see what happens with Kelleher. Let's see what happens with Bradley. And then 
yeah, yeah. yeah we'll see what what happens like so I, I could be making some bold moves around like Watkins to Darwin and then but obviously to get Darwin I have to get rid of one of the other players so it could be like yeah, if like Allison's back it could be Kelleher to someone and then Watkins to to um yeah, yeah. The Nunes, yeah, these are the sort of moves I have to be playing in my head. But yeah, that's where I'm at. But yeah, you know, if, you know, if, if Richarlison outscores Son this weekend, I'm going to be absolutely devastated if that happens. And I don't, I, I haven't had the balls to bring in Richarlison. Well, uh, I'll be crying next week when we do this. <laughs> uh, but that brings us to the end. I was going to ask you this at the beginning: Have you seen the new the new FPL game? That the fantasy Premier League have bought out. Um, it's not a joke, I mean, by the way. That, that sounds like it's some form of setup to a punchline. No, no, I, mean, I, mean, I know the one that you're talking about. Uh, what was it called? It's called FPL Challenge. It looks interesting. Give me some much though... It feels like you want to talk about it. Yeah, there's, 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 so it's a new challenge every week, but everybody, your point starts from zero every week. So everybody's like blank slate. There's no commutative points. I don't oh, know if the yeah. league's going to work. So I, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's like, um, I played Six Nations fancy a little bit. So, and there's like kind of World Cup fancy that a lot of people probably play for football as well. Yeah. You have like a, but not now, but historically, you were able to just do like a new team every round. But the challenge bit yeah. is like the chat. So I think it was what was it? it? Was you get five players from each team, but it kind of resets it and the budget could be dynamic. And then what you have a, Challenge round, score a header from a defender or something like that. Stuff like that, exactly that. So week one is five players from any team, unlimited budget. Yeah. Week two is attacker score double points, but it's a hundred million budget. So it's just like different every week, but you're always yeah, down think, from zero. No, I think I think it'd be be quite quite interesting. Like because like um I think the draft game is quite good as well. Like the um yeah. but it's quite quiet. Like unless you get like a good league with like good bunch of people like it can get a bit dull but i think that's a, that's like a game with some good fundamentals but no i think it's i think it's kind of cool really because um yeah. i have to admit this season i found a lot more boring from a fantasy point of view but that's because i'm not doing as well like it's a it's a obvious thing to say but like, it's a lot more fun okay. playing fantasy when when you're like getting green arrows and like doing really well when you're like stagnate and just doing a lot worse than than you want to do it is it's a bit more of a slog, like I have to say. So yeah. I think this will be will keep it fresh, and um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be um, I think it'll be harder to pre- predict as well. The challenge element will make it hard to predict what's the optimal team and whatnot, because there'll be a lot of randomness on it. So um, yeah, yeah, these people who suddenly get good ranks because they compute uh, copy a model, <laughs> we'll be it. back to this situation where they're a bit sc- uh, screwed, getting like five hundred k style ranks. So. Uh, yeah, that would be a, a nice leveler. Yeah, it's interesting. I might give it a go for this season. Just I didn't get into the draft, but I like the concept. I just I spent too much time on this FPL to uh, to then join in any of the others. But I might give this one a little go. See how see how we get on for the rest yeah. of the season. See what the challenges are. No, it should be good. Is it what? So starting this week. It starts this week. Yeah. So I've, I've, I've set up a team, and I think I've, I've basically looked at gone right. Chelsea win, Tottenham will win. Uh, I might have a Newcastle player in there, but there's there's three teams that I've got fixtures that they should be dominating in. So I'm pretty much just gone heavy on three teams because you can have five from any side. So it's like Jackson, Palmer, Gusto, Petrovic, Madison, Son, yeah, nice. Richarlison. So I've just kind of done that route, but it's, it looks interesting. It looks interesting. Just a few. If you fancy, we'll do it. If, it, if it's any good, we'll do a uh, we'll do a fan league next 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 season for it. Yeah, well, no, I was gonna say let's see where we finish in, in normal FPL, but like I think you'll you'll have the the expert title going in. Like, so, um, <laughs> we're gonna have to give time. up the yeah, and, and kind of shift to shift to that that version. But I think it's, I think it's, I think it's still nine, nine, nine game weeks left. Nine game weeks left, Matt. Plenty of time. To, uh, to to swing I mean, up your rank. I don't. I don't think. I think people will say like, is it a saturation? Like doing more stuff, and is it just a an annoying distraction? But like generally, how like you can you can set up your a lot of the FPL four is just faffing around. Really, I think you can get to a decision point pretty quicker now than ever before, given like how much information there is. So it's just like, yeah. I think really you can spend about fifteen minutes. 
if that thinking about who the options are, the rest of it is just you playing like it's just having like internal dilemmas, right? But I know you're yeah. you're like wildcard team. I know you were like you text me, oh, I'm thinking of doing wildcard. And ten minutes later, you came up with that team, and it's like <laughs> it's like stood the, stood stood the passage of time. I still think it's a good team, and like I think I looked to my team, I was like, oh, do I wildcard? Oh, maybe. Oh, I can't pull pull a good team together. Okay, I need Salah. Palmer's a big upgrade as well. I don't think you spend, I don't really, if you're quite clinical, you're thinking you spend what, 15, 20 minutes properly thinking about it. I mean, I consume yeah. content, like I listen to other podcasts and stuff like that and like go on like okay, X yeah. a little bit just because it's just like fun and like interesting. But I don't think I'm not, you're not zoomed in. So like, I reckon it's, I reckon it's a cool little addition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. When it's obvious, when it's obvious, that's that's when it's. I would you I'd like I listen to even even if I make my decision on the Sunday and I know what I'm going to do on the Friday, I'll still take in the content and probably not change anything and do what I was do what I was going to do as you say, just a something fun to listen to on the way to work, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Do you listen back to yourself? No. <laughs> I, did, I, did I haven't the first back, I haven't, episodes. I, I haven't listened or watched back. Any of them, I just kind of, you know, I hate it, resent it. Like, but I don't resent it. Uh, I'm sure it's, I'm sure yeah. it's decent enough listening. But I can't, I can't listen back to myself. No way, no uh, way. It's, it's, it's weird. I do. I'll tell you when I do do it. I do it when I when I forget who our uh, Matt versus Day players are, and then I get on the, I get on YouTube and rewatch that segment just to, just to find out the players. That's why you're so good at timestamps now, isn't it? Just knew that was going to be an <laughs> issue. Just, got just on for it. me. Purely for me and my and my issues that I have, um, but yeah. So I think uh, next week, well, the game kicks off early doors, 11, 11 a.m. deadline on Saturday morning. So we're still four or five days away. Obviously, still some international games to be played. Mm-hmm. So, so keep eye on injuries and so on and so forth. But I'm sure, Matt. I wish you the best of luck tomorrow. Hopefully, we get another home nations team going to the Euros. Uh, Wales Wales beat Poland. Sorry to any Polish listeners, but you know, come on, Wales. Uh, and hopefully, we'll be celebrating next week with with a load of green arrows to go alongside it. But appreciate your time. Mm-hmm. Appreciate your time, and, and yeah, catch you next week. Get that wild card activated. You're going to get priced out of it. Get it done. I'll probably. I'm going to have to do it, aren't I? I'm going to have to do it, and then I can sit for the rest of the week still contemplating selling Son for a Charleston. But at least that's a downgraded price, so it's a it's a done deal. Yeah. Um, do it, but yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. But thank you to you for the listener as well for joining us. Hopefully uh, we've taught you something, got you thinking differently. If so, please drop us a like. Please drop us a subscribe. It does help us out and helps other people to find us as well. But whether you're like me and you're playing the wild cards, you're like Matt and taking a hit, or just doing your one free transfer, whatever you decide to do, all the best of luck with it. We'll hopefully catch you on the other side with Green Arrow as well. And see you next week. (laughs) 